Hello everyone. In continuation with the wobbling hypothesis, here is the second lecture or discussion on genetic code. Uh, in this topic, we will be discussing about another feature of genetic code, which is known as the degeneracy of the genetic code. So the genetic code is known to be degenerate, as you all know. Let us try and understand what is a degenerate genetic code. So, firstly, the degeneracy of genetic code was identified by Lagerwist. He thought or he observed that some amino acids are coded by two or more codons. This is called the degeneracy of genetic code. Example, GAA and GAG are both codons for glutamic acid. And because one amino acid has more than one codon, this is known as redundancy or degeneracy of the genetic code. Now, the other point about, the, about this is that GAA and GAG code only for glutamic acid. They do not code for any other amino acid. And thus, they are unambiguous. That is, there is no confusion that they would code for any other amino acid. So, although one amino acid has more than one codon, but those codons are not shared by any other amino acid. So, that is why it is said that the genetic code is degenerate and unambiguous. So, the explanation of degeneracy of codons was proposed by Francis Crick in 1966 through the wobbling hypothesis, which we discussed in our previous lecture. Now, according to the wobble hypothesis, as you can see here, that the third base is going to show unusual base pairing. Now, this threonine, THR or T, states that the wobble hypothesis, in wobbling hypothesis states that the third base pair varies without change in resulting in the amino acid, which means that ACT, ACC, ACA or ACG, where the first two bases are same and the last base is varying and yet the amino acid that they code for is threonine. So threonine has four different codons and they result these four different codons result in the same amino acid that is threonine. So the genetic code is degenerate. Some tRNAs recognize only one codon, but there are many tRNAs that recognize more than one codon. Therefore, although there are 61 codons for 20 amino acids, the number of tRNAs is far less that is around 40 or 50. In some books it is mentioned 40 while in others it is mentioned 50. And this gives rise to a phenomenon and this is possible because of the wobbling phenomenon. So as we had uh, discussed earlier, wobbling means that there is flexibility in the third base pairing and it does not follow the Watson and Crick base pairing. The advantage of degeneracy or redundancy. If a mutation occurs at one degenerate codon at three third position and it results in the same amino acid, then it is a silent mutation. So degeneracy protects the function of the protein because although there is change in the base at the third position of a codon, there, it doesn't result into a different amino acid. So, degeneracy is nature's mechanism to reduce the negative impact of random mutations, um, especially the point mutations. So, let us see one example of silent mutation. You can see that at DNA level, the bases are TTC or TTT and at mRNA level, mRNA level it is AAG and AAA. But they both, both these codons are for the same amino acid lysine in a protein. So, because of this unusual base, 
or flexibility at the third position even if there is a mutation at the third position it is not bringing about a change in the amino acid so this mutation is equivalent to silent mutation that is even though there is change it is not resulting in change in the sequence of amino acid in the protein thank you